For the fans of Analog TV, I have a treat for you guys today. It's a Panasonic. It has no color, and it's a CRT set. This is a milestone for me, video number 1,000. I hope you enjoy this one. It's a good one. I have a Panasonic color TV here that, um, well, it's not displaying any color. And if we go through the menu, we'll see that the color is actually turned up. So it's not a setting problem. We have a beautiful black and white picture here of color bars. As you can see, it's not just that channel either. I have no color on anything. I've just got channel 40. I've got my color bar generator going into channel 40. And we're going to pull this set apart and see what's wrong with the color circuit. This will be the first video I actually get to experience my new Tektronix scope. So we're going to put this thing through its paces today too and see how it works. And I'll even do a comparison. I'm going to do some measurements. So we'll measure it on both and just see the differences between the two. And this might help cement people's decisions as to why if you're doing work on analog equipment, you really want an analog scope. Because I think that some of the measurements that we're going to test on this thing are going to be much more apparent on an analog CRT scope than on one of these digital jobbies. These digital scopes are very good for their specific capabilities and that is catching digital signals and being able to display a complex digital uh, logic waveform. If you want to analyze bits, you can certainly do it with a digital scope, whereas an analog scope is going to fail miserably. But when you're working in the analog domain, um, the analog scope is certainly going to uh, do a much better job than any digital scope, as I think I'll be able to demonstrate when we start measuring video. I know that I'll be able to demonstrate that when I start measuring video on this thing because, well, I've tried measuring video on that digital scope before and it was an absolute mess. But when we get into measuring complex waveforms, it's going to be a piece of cake on the analog scope. Okay, after removing the back from the set, we have to determine where we're losing our color signal. Now on this set, this is a single chip type design for the signal processing. The AN5150NK. This does all of your signal processing, okay? This is your IF circuit in here. So, so the tuner, which is right next to it here, here's the tuner circuit. And this set here actually has audio video inputs on it. So the audio video inputs are back here. So your AV signal is routed in through here as well. There'll be a there'll be an uh, audio and video input because this, I believe the switching is done internal on this IC if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but your IF comes in through here. Here's your IF transformers, your saw filter. Actually, these would probably be the IF transformers here. One of these is going to pick off your sound. One of these ones here. I'd have to look at the pinout. But the demodulation is done in here as well as the chroma decoding is done inside this IC. Right over here, this is the 3.5 megahertz crystal oscillator. So the first thing, because I don't have a schematic for this thing, I'm going to go look up that chip and see if I can print out a pinout. That way we can look at the actual IC and see what signals we are missing. And we'll use a scope for that. So we look at the IC here. It tells us that it's, it's video, it's IF, sound IF, color, and synchronous signal processing IC for NTSC system. And here's the block diagram. And on the other side of the page here, this is all the IF circuit here for demodulating, right? You've got your IF, AGC, IF, oh, IF goes in here, sorry. IF goes in pin 35 and pin 36. So this portion here is the IF portion. This portion here is our video portion. So it looks like we've got uh, composite video goes out on pin number 21 and returns from the YC separation on pin 13 and pin 16. And our contrast color and tint controls here. So it could be a problem with a shorted capacitor, for example, on the color line, which would be pulling pin number 41 low, which would kill the color even though the on-screen display still shows that uh, there's this color level set right okay looking at this thing pin 39 that appears to be the crystal that uh, generates a signal 
for the um, color demodulating. So we're going to look at pin 39 on the scope and see whether we have our 3.58 megahertz crystal oscillator because if we have no 3.58 then guess what? We have no color. So if we have no 3.58 it could be the crystal has failed or it could be the capacitor has failed. One of the two could be uh, causing that trouble. So let's take a look and see if we've got our reference. So I'm going to look with the analog scope at uh, pin 39 which is that one right there and as you can see we have a signal. Oh, it doesn't look clean does it? Looks like it's kind of jumping all over the place but there is a signal there. Hmm. That looks a bit odd. I would expect that that would be rock stable but it's not. Let's take a look and see how bad it looks on this other scope whether it'll even actually register or anything that'll be interesting so here's pin 39 oh it's a mess well as you can see that doesn't look correct. That looks, you know, I mean, you can, you can tell, I mean, even on the, even on the DSO, that should be a nice stable uh, signal, color signal. It's only showing up, only showing about one megahertz, which is wrong. It's supposed to be 3.58. Well, let's flip the TV on its side. We'll uh, take a measurement right on the crystal itself see whether the crystal's oscillating properly. This could be a real simple one, it might be a bad crystal. And you guys know, I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again, it's worth repeating. When you're working on a television like this, this is a hot chassis, there's no transformer on this. So one side of the AC line is connected directly to the ground, like the chassis, like these ground points here. These are not necessarily at ground. These could be connected to line depending on what way you put the plug in. Now most of these have a polarized plug, so you can only put the plug in one direction. But if your AC plug is wired backwards, which happens, uh, then yeah, you could end up with a live circuit. You could end up with a live chassis. So when you're working on these TVs, always use an isolation transformer. Okay, I'm going to go back and look at, and here is the crystal here. Okay, my signal on the crystal looks good, doesn't it? Looks excellent. I don't see any of that noise that I saw on pin number 39. Let's go back to 39 again. That was, uh, which one was that? That one was this one here, I think. Yeah, there it is on 39. Hmm, interesting. That looks really bad, doesn't it? And here it is on the crystal. The crystal is right there. It looks great on the crystal. Let's take a look at that with the digital scope and see how it looks on this. So here was pin uh, 39 again, I think that was it there. Yeah, there's pin 39, you can see it on the digital scope, it's jumping all over the place. And we go down to the crystal, and well, it's a much lower signal, but um, It's 3.58 here, which is nice because the scope's got the scope's got a frequency counter built in, which is which is one of the nice things about having a DSO. That's why I won't be giving up this DSO. I'll be hanging on to both of these scopes because uh, this does have features that make it really really nice when you're working on equipment. That tells me that my crystal is bang on 3.58, but when I go up here to the actual input to the chip. Well, it's, uh, what, is that the right one? Uh, no, that wasn't it. This is it here. I think that's it. Pin 39. Right there. As you can see here, it's not even a megahertz and it's distorted. See how distorted that signal is? That should be a nice clean 3.58 signal. And if I, if I go back and look at it on the analog scope, if I don't get myself all tangled up here, on the analog scope, 
it's uh, right, uh, where was it? right there and as you can see I can see that that noise right it's just jumping all over the place and this is where analog scope will come in handy like if we look at the eye pattern which I can do I'll get, grab a CD player in a future video and we'll look at the eye pattern on an analog scope versus the digital scope you're not going to see it on a digital scope because you you need this you need the instant display a digital scope is great but the problem is it has to actually measure over a period of time and capture it and digitize it and uh, if you've got a signal that's that's varying like this is you're not going to get an accurate read with it anyway that's that gives me a place to start let's take a look at some of the other signals on this chip here and see so um let's see here where's the signal going in I believe is my input. Let's just take a look at pin number 13. Pin number 13 here is that should be my video input. I think. Yeah, there's my video input. Okay, pin 13. Let's take a look at that same reading off this digital scope. Let's see how it looks. How does pin 13 look on the digital scope? This is where this thing is going to fail. Guaranteed. Okay, maybe not, but there's my luminance input and my chroma input should be the next one I believe over from that that should be uh, pin oh, pin 15 there's the chroma input but as you can see on the, the DSO it doesn't look nice we go back and look at it on the analog scope the chroma input looks really nice Okay, there's the chroma input on an analog scope. That's what chroma is supposed to look like. Right? That's what you're supposed to see when you're looking at it. And looking at it on the digital scope, well, I guess it's there. It just doesn't look as nice as it does on the analog scope. This thing doesn't fare as well with and it's not it's not locking in as well either. Although I can probably fix that go into my trigger menu here and adjust my trigger level. There we go. So there's the chroma on the analog or on the, the digital scope, which works. And here's the video on the digital scope. And on the analog scope, we'll go back and look at it again. Here's the video on the analog scope right by uh, this the scope here the sync the uh, trigger level control is buggered up on it so I'm gonna have to try and fix that but there is the uh, there's the luminance and the chroma which is a stronger signal coming in but there's the chroma on the analog scope okay so we got chroma and we got luminance going into the chip so we know it's, it's something definitely inside the chip that's causing the problem and because I've already checked the crystal frequency and found that the crystal doesn't appear to be working properly coming from the crystal with pin number 39, let's just take a close look at that board. I'm going to get the magnifiers on so I can inspect the board real close. I get a sneaking suspicion it's going to be this capacitor. There's a capacitor that's right off of. Thanks guys. There's a capacitor right here. The signal goes through this capacitor. I have a feeling this cap is probably bad. I'm just going to try changing it. It's going to be a little ceramic jobby, so let me just shut off the power here and warm up my soldering iron. And I'm just going to pull that little capacitor out and try that first. That's going to be the series capacitor that's right here uh, in line with the, the crystal. I bet you, I bet you, it's, the crystal's not bad because it, it's the right frequency, but it's the wrong frequency going in. I bet you, I bet you that's all it is that's gone wrong. It's going to be a little, a little ceramic capacitor and it may have picked up some moisture or something.
hell is it again? Oh, here we go. Okay, got the old little ceramic cap here in my hand. So sometimes what happens is, you, you know, I don't see any cracking on this one, but oh, there's a little chip on the top here. There's a little chip on the top of this capacitor. I wonder if it's hermetically, uh, the seal is broken and moisture has gotten into it. It's a, uh, it's been eight picofarad. Let's see if I can find one that's that size. I may have to go a little bit bigger, but we'll see if I can find an 8 picofarad here. One of the reasons I hang on to old scrap boards like this is because not quite often you can find parts in the, that are useful. In this case, I've got a capacitor that I can use. So let's put this new used capacitor in and uh, we'll see what happens with this. Pliers might help to get in here and install this part. Where the hell am I going? There we go, it's in the part. Solder. Okay, new part installed. Moment of truth. We're gonna get color. Gotta turn the set on. It's not one of these ones that automatically comes back on when you. Let me turn on the power. Do we have color or do we have a black and white picture? Oh boy, I think we have color. <laughs> do we have color? That was it. That was it. Capacitor, okay. Um, series capacitor. Let's take a look at the signals now again. We'll put the scope up here again and we'll show you what it looks like now that but that's that's all it is and that's actually quite a common failure you get these uh, small ceramic capacitors that can that can short or go leaky I wouldn't say it's shorted um, but they can go leaky so let's take a look at the signals here again pin 39 we'll first look at it on the analog scope so pin where was it here 30 Pin 39 is there. There's our, our color burst signal there. If we look on the crystal, here's the crystal again. And here's the, at the capacitor. comes up through here and it ends up on pin number 39 which is there you see it's a lower signal right but we we're getting a higher signal before but it's stable now you see it's not jumping all over the place before it was you all you remember the jitter that was on there before and the jitter is gone so let's take a look with the digital scope 
same thing here's the here's the crystal I'll set up my three point five eight I go up to pin number thirty nine here three point five eight but you see it's, it, it looks almost distorted on here when I'm looking at it it's not it's not a nice clean signal like it was off the uh, off the crystal but the frequency is right 3.58 where it's coming at one megahertz before so that's what happened on this set interesting before I uh, put this together maybe we'll look at some other waveforms and just compare the uh, the digital to the analog scope so you guys can see the difference in complex waveforms. I'm going to measure some high voltage, uh, the video outputs, which is high voltage. So I'll get the probes set to times 10. I'll just clip onto my shield here. And you got, you got to watch what you're looking at here because if you, if you, if you say tie down to the G2 uh, and your scope's not ha can handle the, the, the uh, voltage, you could be in for a bad day. But I'm going to take a look at the video outputs on here, which are up here. Here's the output transistors. So, I've turned this thing down, obviously. So there's the, I think that's the red output. Where we got here? We got the red output here. We have the uh, green output here. And the blue output is, where's the blue output? Blue output should be this one over here. That's the blue output. So those are the red, green, and blue outputs as seen on an analog scope. Okay, now let's take a look at the same the same signals on the DSO. My second probe so I can get ground off this thing. Okay, now we're grounding it off the second probe. Here's my uh, green output. And again, to turn this thing down. Okay, there's the information there. Let's put the other scope on at the same time. So you can look at the two of them. Which one's easier to read? I think the analog scope's a little more. First of all, as soon as you touch it, you've got a signal, right? The digital scope, you gotta wait a second or so for it to lock up, but anyway, that's just looking at complex waveforms. They both have their they both have their purpose. I'm gonna do a VCR service video. I'll dig one out here and we'll do something or we'll look at some waveforms where the analog scope will blow away the digital scope for sure. Maybe maybe uh, look at a waveform from a uh, CD player. Look at the RF from a CD player. There we go. TV's fixed. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support over the years. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you want to send me a little bit extra, well, you can do it either with Patreon or right there. Send me something PayPal. Appreciate any donations you guys give me. It lets me continue the channel. Let's me buy equipment and, uh, you know, pick stuff up to service. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.